Das ist da okay. So, sorry, we now went over two minutes. Isabella was perfect and stopped at sharp uh, the, the, her time. And now I delayed the start of Chunkit. So right. it's my great pleasure to introduce Chunkit Lai from San Francisco State University whose talk was already advertised by near left <laughs> two days ago or three. So we are really expect, excited about your talk. And he's talking about some recent progress on Fourier frames and free spaces for singular measures. Great, go ahead, Chunkit. Uh, just one second, uh, anybody who wants to interrupt and ask a question, just go ahead. So you, if you don't understand something, you can uh, feel free to interrupt the speaker. Okay, yeah. Chunkit. Thank, thank you, Ayushula. Thank you, the organizers, for inviting me to speak uh, in the MCA conference. And yeah, my talk is about uh, my research on Fourier frames and risk basis uh, on singular measures and newer has uh, advertised it. Uh, last week and so the beginning uh let's make the definition so uh if you're given a borel probability measure and i uh, use the e lander to denote the exponential function and e capital lander to denote the collection of the exponentials and we say that this collection is a free frame if uh, you have a uh, this generalized possible identity Imagine if they are equal, you get the possible identity. And there's a, there's a different by a constant. If it exists a constant like this, and the e lander will be called a Fourier frame, and the measure will be a mid a Fourier frame, we call it frame spectral. Uh, yeah, so and if a if a measure has of normal basis, it automatically has a Fourier frame, so it, it will be called spectral. Uh, if it has an orthonormal basis. And uh, at the same time, uh, we want to do the, another duality, which is uh, if you have a probability measure and now you are, you instead of looking at the completeness, you look at the how linear independent of the exponential it is and quantify it by a lower bound and upper bound. If such a lower bound and upper bound exists for the linear combinations and is comparable to the coefficients, this will be called a risk sequence. And uh, uh, so a risk sequence, you can, you can imagine is uh, just linear independent because you, you look at the lower bound is independent and it's not complete in general. On the other hand, if you have a frame uh, in the, just in the previous page, it, you can find a Fourier expansion and it is uh, complete, but usually it's over complete. It's uh, linear dependent in general. Uh, of course, if we are very lucky, we have both risk sequence and <laughs> frames it will be called a risk basis. Uh, yeah, some questions? Yeah, so that will be the definition of risk basis. Uh, of course, there's a, there are other many different kinds of uh, definitions of risk basis uh, in literature, uh, in, in corresponding to the Hilbert space. And but uh, most handy one or useful one or that is provable or tractable one is uh, at having the both conditions here. So, uh, yeah, so there's uh, some general results of well, Fourier frames uh, for general measures. Uh, it was discussed by Newell's talk. Uh, so if a measure is frame spectral, it must be a purely, it must be of pure type, uh, purely discrete, purely singular continuous or purely absolutely continuous with spectral back. And if this is a pure discrete, actually we can fully classify it. If only if it has a finitely many atoms, and indeed, uh, there's a, just uh, some linear algebra, you can even show that they are actually all emitting free spaces, ignoring the bounds. The bounds may be very bad, but it exists. Yeah. And for con absolutely continuous measure, uh, it is a uh, frame spectral even only if uh, the density is uh, bound away from zero and bound above on the essential support of the measure. And of course, uh, if it's bounded, it's trivial. You can just put a square and you produce a Fourier frame. And if the measure, if the omega is an unbounded but of finite measure, uh, we can, so that was a very, much difficult question. And the son, Olivsky and Yunoski in 2016 solved the problem. 
uh, using the Carterton singer. So you, that means uh, discrete and purely singular are completely understood. Uh, so, uh, purely uh, discrete and continu absolute continuous are understood. So uh, the question will be on the singular measure, singular with our atoms. And so my talk uh, will be uh, focusing on a necessary condition and the two types of singular measures I, uh, that's uh, actively studying. Uh, one is a fractal type and the other is a surface measure. So uh, concerning the necessary condition, uh, oh, oh, wait a second. Before we concern, we, we, we go, go to, let's, uh, let's study an example. Uh, there exists a singular measure whose it not only admits a free frame, it also admits a, a volumal basis. Uh, exponential for normal basis. Uh, that was the middle fourth Cantor measure, uh, which is uh, defined by the cell similar identity. Or if we want to see why it admits an of normal basis, uh, we, it's the good, better thing is to put it into an infinite convolution of the rough measures. So middle fourth is first of all, you take the first two points and then iterate. You produce four points and then produce eight points. So and horizontally, they are all the same. So they are infinite convolutions of uh, discrete measures. And if you look at each of the measures, just look, look at the first one. So this is actually uh, two digits, zero and two, in the group of integer four, uh, in the secret group of four. So uh, just like Isabella's talk, it's the simplest one. Uh, zero two is a spectral set in C4, it's a tiling. It's also a tiling, and you can find the spectrum is zero one. That's uh, that's uh, the re that's uh, the first measure is a spectral measure, and indeed, the magical thing happens is because we are in the integers. If you do convolution up to the nth level, every n one are uh, every n convolution are spectral measures, and uh, this uh, due to Jorgensen and Peterson. Mu4 is a spectral measures. And what are the spectrum is uh, you take it until infinity, uh, take all the ends. Uh, I forgot to union all the ends. Uh, yeah, all the ends. So that's a pretty sparse spectrum. And uh, uh, yeah, so of course, taking it to infinity may, may require some technical work, but uh, this is the principle. All end level approximation are spectral measures. And then you take it to infinity uh, with some condition. Uh, you can ensure it is a spectral measure as well. And at this, so this uh the middle fourth one. And of course, the middle third is uh, someone uh, is more, uh, more people will use it. Uh, unfortunately, the middle third one is not a spectral measure. Indeed, it's very bad. It even almost it doesn't have any orthogonal element. So the only two, you can have at most two mutually orthogonal exponentials. And so uh, one of the main questions uh, people, uh, I think the first one was by Stricker. Uh, he posed uh, with where the middle third emits some Fourier frames, uh, some more general Fourier expansions. Of course, at the same time, another question will be, uh, well, we'll measure some measure will emit a Fourier frame. What measures or what singular measures will emit a Fourier frame? So that's uh, the, Another, uh, ma another major questions here. So uh, in newest talk, uh, we uh, he already discussed some necessary condition. And so uh, in 2014, uh, myself and uh, Dorin Deke, uh saw proved that, well, actually there exists some singular measure that doesn't even have real frame. And these measures, uh, one of the examples will be, okay, just, Go back to the middle fourth, and now don't do mid, uh, one the equal weights. Just make it unequal, make the weight unequal, and well, then you will not have a Fourier frame. This measure is the reason is that uh, one the left weight is too heavy, and the other weight is so you get a different rates. And if you have a Fourier frame, we prove uh, there is a translational comparable condition. Uh, the two measures between, if you have the same piece in the same, in the set, in the support, they should have kind of a almost equivalent mass. But if you do a different rate, it will not be able to happen. So, uh, so we need certain uniformity. 
And so, uh, so the uniformity is uh, kind of formulated in, in a kind of a translational absolute continuity. Uh, but for the sake of time, I'm not going to talk about uh, in detail what it means. Instead, uh, let's uh, do, let's uh, work on, uh, so what I'm thinking of, uh, just make using uh, the idea of local dimension. Uh, yeah, that was an uh, universal, I think. Uh, if you have a omit a uh, free frame, I think it should have some kind of finally many possible local dimension. So local dimension is asking for the local with local behavior of every point. And well, if you measure in general is uh, exhibiting multifractal behavior, you will have infinitely many local dimensions. Uh, and uh, we can, I, maybe it's true or maybe it's false, we don't know, I, I don't know. So you may have, uh, on, I think maybe it has only finitely many. And in particular, if you do cell similar or cell fine measures, it has a Fourier frame, it has, I think it has exactly one. So that's a conjecture, maybe false, maybe, maybe true. Uh, so as uh, in Newell's talk, uh, he showed that, well, you, it may have uh, not finitely many, it has, may have two. You put a measure, maybe a middle fourth in the x axis, and then put another, maybe even mid, uh, 60, uh, middle 60 uh, in the y right direction, and then you act them together. So they are kind of in two independent directions. And Neuros uh, shows that uh, these measure, the addition of these measures is still frame spectral. It was uh, in Neuros talk. And this is kind of a uh, later on. Uh, uh, yeah, I think I, I also discussed with Leo through emails and I have another collaborator coming and we find another kind of an interesting thing uh, is, okay, let's uh, just turn the 16 one from the Y axis down to the X axis. So as long as you still have uh, two independent directions, they are all frame spectral. But uh, finally, if they all collapse into one dimension, uh, actually it's not frame spectral, it was uh, proof by myself and Fu in 2018. So uh, it's kind of saying in the dimension one case, uh, if you kind of, the, you have two, this has exactly two local dimension, it's not in spectral. So, uh, so kind of uh, the finally many local dimension behavior, it's kind of a uh, exhibit should have, should be in several independent, several other directions rather than all collapse into one, one direction. Yeah, so that's uh, was uh, kind of the progress about the uh, necessary condition. It's a kind of a uniformity is the, is the principle. Uh, so uh, yeah, that's a necessary condition, but you, we, we know middle Middleford Cantor measure is uh, uniform. It's uh, all local dimension at log two over log three, all uniform, but we still don't know we has Fourier frame or not. Uh, so, well, do we have any positive result about spectral or frame spectral singular measures? So uh, two types of measures uh, have been studied, have been keep studied. So uh, fractal type measures and some surface measures. So uh, let's talk a little bit on the fractal type measures. Uh, so fractal type measures are the representing examples that you, we can do uh, or study whether we has a Fourier frame, uh, basically all of the form, an uh, infinite convolution of the rat masses. And uh, so the idea is, okay, you pick uh, some B1 in the N1 scale. So you pick B1 terms, and then you, you have, uh, you divide the N1 pieces and then choose some pieces in the first step. And then in the next level, you divide the N2 in the sub, Sub level and then choose B2 of them. And then horizontally, they're the same. And then you keep continue, you continue. So if you do all Ns are uh, four and all Bi's are uh, zero two, you get back your the middle four, the middle four can measure. Or if you do all threes and Bi are zero two, it is the middle third. So all these type, <clears throat> these type of measures are, uh, yeah, in, so uh, in 2017, uh, myself and Wang, uh, uh, Yang Wang uh, proved. So these measures, these types of measures 
there exists some of these type of measures emitting Fourier frame, but they are not being spectral. They does not emit. They do not emit any Fourier or Fulamo basis. So that means uh, well, at least uh, Fourier frame classes of measure is larger than than spectral measures. And uh, well, a type of example I can explain to you is uh, is okay. Each of the b i uh, uh, consecutive digits and the n i uh, uh, divisible, but you add a one here. Uh, so the reason is that if you for, for, if you forget about the one, uh, b i in n i, which is divisible, and in this group, in the group of c n i, this is a tiling because uh, it is exactly the divis divisible. Yeah, uh, exactly divisible. So it is a tiling. So a tiling, uh, we can prove easily this has. Uh, each is spectral, is actually spectral, and the spectrum is uh, is uh, is given by the group zero m i and then just uh, using the t one t two condition, or you can if just do a Fourier matrix. So you uh, that would be a spectral measure. And what I'm doing here is you add a one, the one destroy completely the orthogonality. This one is destroy the orthogonality, but indeed the one just change the matrix a little bit. And if you compute the, the matrix uh, with respect to the hard, uh, to the spectral one, the norm doesn't change much. The L2 norm the, or the operator norm didn't change much. And in that case, we are able to control the frame bound. We are able to control the frame bound. And, uh, and when you iterate, the frame bounds can be fully controlled without blowing up. So, uh, for the spectral case, you can always keep the same. You can always keep keep it uh, always one. But if you uh, change it to frame, the frame bound will gradually blow up, will gradually blow up under convolution. But if you control it carefully, you can avoid blowing up. In in the in the end, we produce a frame spectral measures. So uh, in some sense, it's still not far from tiling. But uh, that is uh, kind of the example we gave. And later on, uh, in we study uh, further on this type of measure, and we actually show that they are all with spectral. They, they all meet uh, actual spec uh, with space. All these spectrum constructed are uh, actual with spaces. Uh, it was in yeah uh, in a late another paper. So that is uh, the thing about the fractal measures. So uh, yeah, so. And so let's turn to talking about surface measures. Uh, so uh, one of the motivation about surface measures is uh, when Nissan, Ulipsky, and Lunowski study uh, the Fourier frame on unbounded set, he actually used Cartesian singer. They actually used Cartesian singer to prove a very beautiful theorem. Is uh, if you have a set of positive of measures, measure, they, they are able to construct a discrete set whose Fourier frame is uh, have a, this frame bound, just a complete, this, the little c and positive c are all independent of the set. And uh, which is a pretty strong result uh, from, from the Carter Singer. And uh, actually, if you use, uh, use this to middle for Kenta measure, you have the nth level approximates of the Kenta set. So you can produce at, at each nth level, you produce a kind of a frame, a finite frame in the nth level which has a universal constant found away from universal constant and which has a free frame on each finite approximation. And looks like, well, can we really push it down to the infinity? That was the, that was the main question. Uh, of course, I, I didn't, I, that question for me to is still an open question, but uh, we, let's think about in another scenario, which is the annulus on the unit sphere and you thicken it by an annulus. And using that above theorem, okay, each annulus, each thin annulus emits a free frame, of course, depends on delta, uh, with a uh, universal frame bound, universal frame bound. But the lambda delta, of course, we don't know how it, it's, how it's uh, is situated. It depends on delta. So each mu delta is the Lebesgue measure, and it has a free frame. And the frame bound is independent of all the delta. So, but the lambda depends on delta. Uh, so the main question is, 
just the same, just like Midofer. If I take the weak limit to weak to the surface measure, well, uh, are we able to produce a frame some somewhere like that? That uh, uh, that was the question, and that was also advertised in newest talk. Uh, yeah, the main solution here is that yeah, uh, this process doesn't work well. Uh, if you just like in this sphere, they or any set with positive Gaussian curvature, uh, non vanishing Gaussian curvature, uh, the surface measure will not have any Fourier frame. That was a result by uh, Yusufich, myself, uh, Bo Chen Niu, and uh, M. Wyman. Uh, yeah, that, that was a <clears throat> result. And uh, well, uh, well, while at the same time, so the curvature does play an important role. Uh, if you turn it back to all the polytopes, just look at the surface measure on all the polytopes. So it's a finite sum of house of measures. They all emit Fourier frame. They all emit Fourier frame. So, uh, so uh, yes. Yeah, so I, okay. So uh, I think as promised from newest <laughs> new next talk, I think I should try to give you, originally I was not thinking to give a proof of this one, but I, the new, new, new name suggests we sh I should give a proof. So let me just uh, try to indicate how this is proved. Uh, so uh, the, this theorem, how this uh, theorem is proved. So uh, that actually comes into two kind of an interesting general theorem we observe. So first of all, uh, if you have a Borel measure uh, and then lambda is a countable set and it has a frame lower bound, lower frame, it has a frame lower bound, the lower bound. And now we assume that the mu has a Fourier decay of certain gamma, polynomial rate gamma. Well, uh, actually we can show that the summation of lambda one over lambda gamma uh, is infinite, is uh, not summable. Yeah. So, <clears throat> So, and we know for surface measure, for surface measure, uh, gamma is D minus one. It has a Fourier decay of D minus one. So that means the summation for D minus one will be infinity, will be infinity. If there is a Fourier frame, if there is a Fourier frame, then the sum, this uh, lambda to D minus one summation will be infinity. Yeah. So that's uh, the first observation. And yeah, uh, that's kind of uh, expected. You can imagine if you get Fourier decay, but you still want to uh, be complete, you kind of squeeze and you have to make it make it more dense. And the density- Thank you, oh, sorry. If the, dens the density, uh, the density kind of uh, is quantified by the decay rate. Yeah. And yeah, I can also mention this is not trivial because for the middle fourth Cantor measure, uh, we know there is no Fourier decay. And actually you can find measure that is arbitrary sparse uh, for middle fourth Cantor measure. Uh, it can be arbitrary sparse. So this is the first one. And now this another second one coming in is uh, about how about the uh, Bessel sequence? That means the frame upper bound. If on the other hand, you have a frame upper bound and there is another condition, uh, I think it's not, yeah, I don't quite like this condition, but the magic works for, for the sphere uh, for this condition. So this condition is kind of saying that, okay, if you try to integrate the Fourier transform on a certain ball of radius among, among the points, and then you kind of cancel the decay rate, you cancel the decay rate, and then you, you are still getting large enough. You are still getting large enough well, look, then uh, the Fourier sum will be finite. The Fourier sum will be finite uh, at this gamma. So uh, the magic comes in is this condition is satisfied by the surface measure. Uh, the reason is that there is a winning two rows. F, the Fourier transform on the surface measure are all completely asymptotics, are all completely studied in 1960 by Hertz. I think if, if you read Alex Yusufich's paper, you can see a lot of this result in his papers. Uh, 
that's uh so I make it a little bit more general, but uh, you, you, you don't like you just go back to the Euclidean norm and this is row size is also Euclidean norm. And then uh, the Fourier transform is uh, given by this asymptotics. This is a lower order term. So now if you imagine uh, going back to this, this condition, if you, in, if you try to cancel out the decay, so which is here, you try to cancel out the decay, you multiply, so you square it and then cancel out the decay. So, I, so the leading term is just a cosine or cosine square, cosine square. So you integrate a cosine square on a large enough interval will be stay away from zero. That's a, that's the proof. That's a kind of a, the idea. So uh, yeah, so that's uh, why uh, you get this condition and this is finite. But on the other hand, you get a Fourier decay is infinite. So that means if by contradiction, if it has a Fourier frame on the sphere, Fourier decay tells us the sum is infinite, but the asymptotics tell you that the sum is finite. So you get the contradiction. So no such frame could exist. So that's a kind of the idea of the proof. And so uh, I think I still have a little bit of time. Uh, so uh, there's uh, some more recent result. Uh, so it's on the polytops. Uh, so we I recently studied with my student is uh let's uh it's about the new newest uh the measure studied by newest first study by new new net is uh so if you have two continuous probability measure so let's do put one in the x-axis put another in the y-axis and then so th this one is just to average it out so uh I call it ad additive space so new newest proved that if mu and new are spectral then the addition is is also a miss a frame. So frame spectral, the role is a frame spectral. So I concern about the width spectrality or of a normal basis about this type of measures. And there's some reason result I, let me just uh, tell you a little bit, uh, which is also quite interesting. Uh, I did not solve it completely. So uh, let's think about, so, so symmetric if uh, the two measure is the same. And non-overlapping means they are away from they are away from zero, just like the picture. They they do not intersect at zero. So uh, by new uh, prints, uh, my student prints and uh, and myself, we proved that for this measure, if, if mu is re spectral, if the original mu is re spectral, then you take the additive measure mu here and mu here. And you, this measure is away from zero, will be with spectral. That's, uh, that's uh, the result, yeah. So, and then you will be thinking, how about pushing it to zero, right? Pushing it to zero. Uh, so just like something like this. So this is an L space, I call it L space. This is a T, this is a pass. And this is a kind of a shifter pass with T, right? So uh, with T. So guess what's the what's kind of the interesting result of this one? So so how about this one? Will this has a risk basis? <laughs> yeah, we actually show that this one L space has not only risk basis, it has unique of a normal basis. Three of this is uh this one. Oh, of course, up to translation, up to translations. Uh yes, uh N over two, N over two is kind of uh, the, the spectrum at all in the four, negative 45 degree line and N over two. Uh, well, the proof why is an over normal basis is not too difficult. You can try to project this line into the 45 degree, 45 degree line, it become a straight line. And then the straight line you, and with the, on that line, you can actually see the measure is kind of, uh, is isomorphic. To, to the to negative one to the interval negative one one in that line and from from there I we we showed you can find you can show this is an of a normal basis and the long trivial thing is why is it unique so will there be something crazy sitting around the space and they still form a basis there uh, that's a long trivial thing uh, so how how about others uh, for t space and this shifted t shift the pass the t space and if t is 
shifted by negative one half plus one over two n. All these space we prove that they do not have Fourier basis. They don't have Fourier basis. And uh, for other T, we don't know. In particular, the pus, the pus space, we cannot even show anything. <laughs> I don't know even it has a normal basis or not even. So, uh, and not to talk about risk spectrality, uh, we don't know whether it has risk basis. And the construct, uh, yeah, it's not easy to produce a risk basis uh, for the others. Uh, we still, I don't know. Yeah. So, and uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I, let me finish the talk with some a little bit of open problems I've been thinking of. So, but ju just a moment, I missed the last uh, for the plus. You don't know anything? Autonormal, RIS, frame? No. Oh, no. Frame, of course, yes. Yeah. All these emit a frame yeah, by your result. You know? Ah, okay. Frame, yeah. right. Ah. Yeah. But, yeah. but RIS, you don't know, and autonormal, you also don't know? For pass, we don't even know of a normal. Oh, and but, but this one has no of a normal. This one for particular T, there is no of a normal. But for, for example, irrational T, I don't know for of a normal even. Yeah. Uh -huh. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> you can try to see it because the equation, the of a Ganati equation, this all has some phase factor. This one is just two sine sine pi x over pi x equals negative sine pi y over pi y. And then you need to solve for, for Gano equation there. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. But Sorry, I guess the, I guess the all the examples are variants of the, the one with T. If you just change the T, you can get three of those. So uh, the answer will depend uh, strongly on T. You mean the so T zero, T negative one, and T one half and minus one half, they can give you all of the above. You mean by a translation? No, no, if you just change the T, right? If you put the T zero, you get the first one. Oh, ah, yes, square. yes, yes, exactly. That's what I'm saying. It's yeah, all yeah. of them are embedded in the last example. And by the yeah. T, yes. yeah. Yes, That's the last one is the most general one, yes. And, mm -hmm. but the, the the, the tricky thing okay. is, I don't know whether yeah, what he has over normal basis. That's a, uh, yeah, that's a uh, the question. And yeah, and yeah, I think, yeah, of course, the per space spectral with spectral, I don't know. Well, another question I've been thinking of is how about the boundary of a square or boundary of triangle? Are they emit risk basis? And actually, they all emit Fourier frame, uh, as we showed previously. And well, and will the boundary tell us something from the inside? Uh, that's uh, also another interesting question I've been thinking of. And, oh, uh, yeah, this uh, another question is, uh, well, every measures I find has Fourier frame or has risk spaces. Well, would you be able to produce a measure that has Fourier frame but no risk spaces? Uh, that's I, and also one more thing, Fourier frame for singular measures, does it have Fourier decay? That's also a kind of questionable thing. Uh, of course, there's some trivial case. Uh, I think the spherical cap has Fourier decay and it has Fourier frame. But aside from that, uh, for example, if the frame spectral measure is uh, long integer dimension, also dimension, will it have Fourier frame? I don't know. So that's uh, all kind of open questions I would like to raise up. And thank you very much for your discussion. Okay, thank you very much, Chung Kit. I think since people already asked, we keep on going. So to keep on schedule today, if you have more questions, I'm sure uh, Chung Kit will be happy to answer them if you write him or you talk to him on the forum. So thank you again very much yeah. and very nice talk. Thank you. Let me try to exit.